Hey, welcome. Thanks again for joining me today. I'm Michael Haley, the pastor of New Day Church in Brandon, Florida, and I'm just so glad you're here. If you were with me last week, you remember that the theme of that was uh, living courageously. And uh, today I want to continue that theme because in light of all the volatility and hostility in our country and even around the world, it can be a scary place at times. Would you agree? Listen to these words we read last week from Joshua chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. As I was with Moses, this is God speaking, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, because of this promise, I want you to be strong and courageous. Now there's the word. Last week I gave you two ways to live courageously. One was just simply to stand up and take initiative. Ask God to give you the courage to stand up and take initiative. Own your stuff. Take responsibility. Be honest about your life and about the way you live that life. We also talked about the courage needed to simply take God at His word. A lot of us need that kind of courage to actually just just believe what God says to us, His promises. In other words, to not only read the promises in the Bible, but... Uh, but also to courageously stand on the truth of those promises and live them out. So today, let's jump in here and let me give you a couple of more ways that you and I can live courageously, beginning with this. We all need God's courage when 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 we're going to make a life change. We need God's courage to make a life change. Now, Israel had been wandering in the desert for 40 years. 40 years. Do you know what you call something you've been doing for 40 years? You ready? You call it normal. For Israel, being in the desert had become routine. It's what they did every day. It's what they knew. It's where they were most comfortable. It was their normal. And in the midst of their normal, the normal routine, God says these words to Joshua in verse 1, which probably would have disturbed uh, the people. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to go cross the Jordan River into that land that you've been searching for for 40 years. Now, when we read a line like that, at first glance, we might believe people, the people were excited and they were all fired up and happy. Boy, we're going, we're going to finally get there. We're going to the land, baby. But in actuality, these words probably evoked a dimension of fear. Wait a minute. Crossing the Jordan, going into that land. Have you seen what's across that river? There are Canaanite cities, our enemies, and they're filled with Canaanite armies trained to kill non-Canaanite people. That's us. Sometimes when, when we refer to the wilderness in the Bible and, and, and Israel being in the wilderness, we, we talk about it being this horrible thing. And it was, frankly. But the other truth is, it would have been so much easier and so much safer for the people at this moment to just stay where they were. I mean, they'd been there 40 years. It's the normal. They, they, know, they know the life. They don't have to worry about getting possibly killed over on the other side of the river. And so it would have been much easier for them to just stay where they were, doing what they were doing. It wasn't ideal, but they were used to it, right? 40 years. They may have even had a degree of comfort or at least familiarity or as we say, normal. Now, what about people today, us? Uh, surely, we say things like, surely that my marriage isn't that great, I get that, but we've, we've gotten used to it. We've been together so long. Sure, this job situation is not ideal. I don't like it, but I've been doing it forever. You know, I'm used to it. And while that attitude might not sound all that bad, it usually is a telltale sign of being stuck in a rut called the wilderness. And how many of you know that is not a good thing? That there is probably more to life and living than you are experiencing. For instance, many of you watching right now are living a, I would say, a pretty stereotypic American life, aren't you? That means you probably have a job that pays fairly well, or you're retired from a job that paid fairly well. Uh, You have a a comfortable house, maybe in a nice neighborhood. Your kids are reasonably well-adjusted. Um, everything seems to be lined up, all is well, at least on the outside. However, some of you have those moments where that still small voice in your head whispers, surely this is not all there is. And you're like, 
wait, what does that thought even mean? This is not all there is. I've been working six days a week. I hardly know my family. Now I'm getting old and wrinkled, and I'm not much fun to be around anymore, so this better be all there is because this is all I have. Does that register with anyone? Hey, hear me on this. Whenever you start describing an impossible mortgage or an 80-hour work week or rocky marriage or a burned-out soul as you have, that's a huge warning sign that something needs to change. Because something that we might call normal, God might describe as being stuck in the desert. And when we realize it, that we're stuck, when we get it, guess what? We are going to be overwhelmed with fear. And that's due to the fact that going forward and making a decided change is not always easy. It's not always pleasant, at least at first. Because the promised land, the future, is always filled with stuff you think can kill you. For the Israelites, it was the Canaanites and the giants in the land. Uh, for, for you and for me, it may be something just as simple as reaching out and asking for help. Or maybe being honest with your partner. Or maybe making that change at work or coming clean about that secret that you've kept for so long. What if the turning point in your life, what if the breakthrough moment for you is simply having the courage to stop pretending that normal is okay and to allow the Holy Spirit to make the change you know you need to make? It could very well be the single deciding factor that determines your happiness and victory uh, for the rest of your life. Just some food for thought. Okay, we need God's courage to make life changes. Secondly, now now listen. Secondly, we need His courage to not make a life change. And I know you're like, what? I know this is going to. It's kind of making you crazy. But but here, but but think with me. While we sometimes need to make a change, there are also times. There are also moments when change is the worst thing possible. I mean, there are those moments when everything about our circumstances screams out, life would be so much easier if I could just walk away. Yet God might be calling you to have the courage to stick it out. When God speaks to Joshua in verse 7, he says this, You be careful, Joshua, to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Now, this is a word to Joshua and the people concerning their obedience under the law. However, there is also a reminder there given to Joshua that applies to us living under grace. God said to him, hey, be careful. There will be moments along your life journey where where it will seem easier and more convenient to veer away from what I've said. To veer to the left or veer to the right or go to a different way. Listen, don't do it. And if you read the book of Joshua and then the book of Judges after it, you will see Israel over and over and over again veering away from what God called them to be and to do. Why? Because it was easier. Listen, sometimes the greatest act of strength and courage we can have in our lives is the courage to make a change and the courage then to not make a change. More food for thought. One more thing. When we decide to accept God's courage to make a change or not make a change, when we decide to do that, did you know that that decision we are making affects not only us, but those around us, family, friends that are close? Someone said this about what our world is going through right now. They said, well, we understand one another better now at least because we're all in the same boat. But in actuality, that is not true. We are not all in the same boat today. We are in different boats, but we are all in the same storm. Mine may be a little different than yours. Maybe it's smaller, weaker, takes on water faster, more often than yours. I don't know. Maybe, maybe your boat is filled with health problems or the people around you is filled with health problems or money problems that go way beyond what what you and they are experiencing, or maybe their boat is filled with people that are hard to like, driving them crazy. Listen, I'm saying that to to say to you, be patient with the people around you. Love one another. Look for ways to encourage one another. 
Find ways to reach out and help one another until your storm passes. And as you do that, you will be helping and encouraging others until their storm passes. All right, I'll stop right there. And, uh, and I thank you for joining me. We'll have some more uh, great stuff for you next week, some more great teaching. Share this on your timeline of your social media, will you? Uh, in fact, all of our teachings, we would appreciate you doing that. If there's anything I can do to help you, I'll be available. Just send me an email on our website, newdaychurchbrandon.org, or uh, send me a special, uh, a special message on any of the social media venues, a personal message, and I'll get right back to you. I'd love to be able to pray for you or, uh, or, or answer any questions you might have. Speaking of praying, let me pray right now for you. For I pray, Father, for every person watching right now that you would help us to work through the issues in our life where we need courage, extraordinary courage, everyday courage. We, we need that. And we pray, God, that you would give us um, the, the, the wherewithal, as you would equip us, and that you would cause us to make those good decisions and know when we need to make a change or not make a change, but have the courage to do either. Thank you for every person watching. Bless them indeed. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.